Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the slight technical delays there. Um, I'm, it's an absolute pleasure for me to um, introduce Sandra Partington, my ex-colleague from City University of London. So over to you, Sandra. Hi, everyone, and uh, thanks very much for having me. And uh, um, oops, yes, up oh, for slide one, please. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. Never move rooms and don't move computers. Um, so uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, today I am talking about um, part of our digital accessibility project. Um, and the slot that I'm talking about, the theme or slice, is making multimedia digitally accessible. You will, you will hear more about our project another time. Um, and uh, what I wanted to run you through was uh, how we've been, um, what we've been doing, our um, our activities, and kind of where we've got to for attempting this kind of this thing at scale. Um, so we've been trying out uh, looking at automated speech recognition. We've had the student pilot. We've been doing a baseline review of all our video and media platforms of which obviously we have more <laughs> more than we started with a year ago blossoming due to covid shall we say uh, and uh, we've had a look at some vendors and we've worked closer i think than ever with our disability and neurodiversity team um so i just wanted to to start with uh, where we were in um, September 2020. Now, we, we had what we called an approach. We thought we can't go for a policy. We need to, you know, test the water first. And of course, that was uh, when the kind of, we needed to let uh, the new regulations were coming in. Um, so what we did, we kind of separated our approach and, and our advice and guidance to staff into pre-recorded media and then we separated that from recording of was it, synchronous online, uh, you know, live live teaching in in groups, um, and we kind of tucked lecture capture aside because uh, we we weren't really getting a lot of people coming in, and that seemed to be carrying on as we went into the next year <laughs> of the COVID. So. Um, just a little review of where we what we actually did in that year. I, I was thinking, well, yes, we did. We did tell stuff about captioning, and um, I did feel really bad telling them about captioning and their duties, responsibilities, because uh, they'd really just got their heads around GDPR, and then and then and then COVID, and it was like, oh dear me, you know, what can I ask these poor souls to do? Uh, some people try to caption all their work sort of twenty four hours, uh, and then and then soon like had to give that up. Anyway, what we did do, we put in that student-led, um, student-run captioning service to at least try and uh, correct a lot of the captions. They were, we were making an awful lot of screencasts or uh, narration over PowerPoint. There was a lot of those They were to be watched before the, the group sessions. They were basically pre-recorded, like distance learning materials, and they, we thought we'll target them for correction. Um, we did switch on wherever we could uh, the automated um, speech recognition captions in like Teams, Zoom, uh, Kaltura. And of course, then we later on, we actually switched on where we could the uh, live ASR um, for live, live teaching as well. So we wandered into that area. Um, we, uh, we, as I say, we left lecture capture because it really went very quiet. Um, and oh, we didn't quite get round to the disproportionate burden, but I would say at this point, we now have a much better idea about it and, um, and how we'll go about it in our, in our next year. So next slide, please. Aren't I getting the, the executive treatment? Um, so we, as I say, we did run a student pilot uh, we had uh, about eight students for I think they were supposed to be for three months and then they uh, carried on for a that's the one lovely yeah yeah up up <laughs> and they carried on for uh, actually they just kept carrying on except we had to swap them over a little bit um, so uh, they loved captioning they were very good at it um, 
they were pretty good at all the subjects. There was a lot of ooing and ahhing about whether we had to have someone from each subject area. But in the end, you know, we took who applied and they were from a range of subjects. But what they found, their best tip was um, as long as they got the same voice and the same subject area, they could really fine tune the, uh, the any accent or how the person spoke and that kind of subject area like shipping law got very good at that um what they did so it wasn't essential to match the subject it's good but it's good to have a range uh what they did discover the shortcomings of automated speech recognition in one of our systems now it does come in different flavors so uh, i'll tell you a bit, little bit about that later um they also discovered a bit of an issue in how we'd set up our Kaltura media platform because we'd missed a few things off our settings. And they really did help us because we basically created a little captioning factory and we had uh, uh, 20 staff taking part and uh, we basically modelled it. And from that, we gathered some really useful requirements and also kind of just a feel for when in the year this would be busy, how much, um, who's really keen on it. Uh, some staff were like, oh, it's too complicated. I don't want to apply. Sorry about that. So um, we had all of these things going on. Um, so the staff were excellent. There was about 20 staff took part. They gave us good feedback. They were very concerned. One thing they were concerned about was that their accents with international staff were affecting accuracy of the ASR and interestingly we find out it, it wasn't uh, it was equally uh, jumbling things up whether you had an accent or whether you were crystal uh, clear English um, so actually um, although it was important to um, correct the captions it, it wasn't actually the accent that was that was doing the problems so again, they helped us model what do they want, how quickly do they need the turnaround, what times of year. Um, now, so we did begin as the as the pilot carried on and on and on. Uh, we did begin to um, look at a range of suppliers and their products. Um, oh, and, uh, and and we got a much better idea of of what we'd be asking for. I'll tell you a little bit about that later. So yeah, my little automated speech fund, I'm not going to tell you the 11 crazy things that it does, but it was amazing having all those students' eyes on this topic because it's all, you know, my God, I'm not used to this Chrome. I've just opened it up on another machine and sorry, it's blipping away. Um, so one, one of my list of 11 crazy things of ASR was that it the students, bless them, they didn't tell me at the time, they only told me this in the focus group at the end, they would it would take the same word in the same recording you know a repetitive word about a particular topic said by the same speaker and then they would change it would change it to a number of different words not the same word a number of different words and so they couldn't use find and replace in the editor to uh, try and grab it so that was a little bit uh, a little bit annoying um and that's just one of the things. However, what it did show up to us is that automated speech recognition usually comes with, you know, it's it's powering your live captions. It's also filling up your interactive transcript. So it's giving a sort of searchable version of that video, um, a highlight that follows the speaker, a downloadable transcript, um, note taking tools. And also, you know, you could see that once that was corrected there, it sits there in the player with the um, with the transcript. Someone can download it or watch it. And what a brilliant, um, brilliant thing that is. Um, but the captions themselves can be a little uh, inaccurate. Um, OK, uh, next slide, please. Um, I guess the. The other thing that um, came out was that trying to get all our platforms the same quite early on, we realized we were missing some things. Our, our big um, mistake was we somehow didn't have the interactive transcript on our main media player, and we didn't have the ability to change the caption size and tech um, contrast. And we were like, oh, no, where did that go? Somewhere in the settings. So we had to get that set back up. Um, and 
we did a sort of baseline and every time I think I've got them all behaving the same, a new feature comes in, breakout rooms in Teams or something, uh, live captions here and there, um, and, and I have to kind of go back through them again. But we'll be carrying that on because it's basically we'd like them to work as easy as possible so that staff don't have to remember, oh, I'm in Zoom, I need to put the live captions on so somebody else can put them on. So we've got a lot of uh, baseline comparisons for that. So on to our, up. Um, the next slide is our request for, uh, I just thought I'd show you this because, um, we, we're going out for uh, just a middle-sized tender. It's not the whole institution tender. So it's, it's, it's a smaller amount of money. So you can actually get, you know, we're going to get about five quotes. And I just thought I'd show you what we came up with to send to the different vendors. You know, this is what I need your quote to reflect. And I don't think I could have done this, this type of information if we hadn't run the student pilot. You know, um, different time zones, uh, you know, short, quick, quick, and then a little bit longer because we've got plenty of time. Um, they seem to have sort of dashboards, so I could actually pile stuff in there from my different platforms and get it fixed quickly. They, some of them are integrating with some systems and some others not. So it's like, oh, well, tell me what you've got. Um, and these were quite uh, useful. Uh, and also how many admin licenses for if we've got a team of people who need to throw things in and pick things out. So that was quite, I don't think I could have come up with that little piece. And obviously that's the beginnings of a, an institutional requirement. Um, so let's move on to the next one. This is our updated approach. Um, obviously we have a kind of guidance and we take this through committees and things, but um, the kind of what we've changed to is, um, well, we're still going on the pre-recorded. Um, the other big change is that on the uh, live classroom, if you would, we're including lecture capture now because we're likely to have a mix of on-site and online. And um, here's another thing where we, we sort of, we hadn't quite got ourselves organized because our lecture capture has only an, an allowance for ASR, um, to come on, which is brilliant. It, it's fabulous. We quite like it. It's, it's not bad, but it, it we'd be through it in three months if we're back to normal. Um, so we're going to have to sort that one out. So we brought that one in the mix. We're also working a lot closer with our disability and neurodiversity team because they have actually had a big input into our new, it's not the lecture capture policy anymore. It's um, recording our teaching. So they are making more stronger statements about having things recorded. Um, I'm gonna skip on uh, to the next slide. Um, so the two things we're gonna try, we're gonna try a, an external company and a, a kind of fast turnaround, a slightly slower turnaround. And we've put, you know, some imaginary money next to that. Uh, and all the academics have said, well, we'll be through that in no time, but I'm just gonna go for it. So we got that one. The other one we've got is the something that will follow the learner, follow them around, and it will put captions wherever they are. It's a kind of overlay. Now, that could come in handy. Um, we're going to start that off with students with a disability or neurodiverse. We'll, we'll pilot it with some people, see what they think, before we sort of can say it's a useful um, disability. Ability, uh, assistive technology. Uh, we'll try it out with that one, could fill in some gaps, uh, say if a student is watching a stream from Echo, it could give them captions on that, something like that could be handy. Uh, we're also going to have to uh, have a look at our lecture capture allowance. We're really going to have to help um, we're going to have to pick up our projects, going to have to pick up this disproportionate burden. But I think we know a bit better now what to ask for and where and how long things might be. And we're also going to have to help staff and create new services. So, for instance, you know, they know how to book lecture capture, but do they know how to book then captions on something? Um, so what I might do is whiz past the next two slides. You can see them. Oh, look at that. Looks fabulous. It's not, not quite finished. This is my question. Um, as I've been doing this, I've been working with the, my colleagues in the disability team and the academics, the students, 
the people using are just like being pulled apart. Like, well, if we have this for a disabled student, that could be good for everyone in their cohort. Why not just do that? Or if I knew where the disabled students or students with neurodiversity were, I could channel resources that way. I don't need to know names. It's I just, you know, I can, if I knew, then could we push things around? And I just thought, you know, this is that sort of, you know, I know there's data there. I think it could work, but I'm, I haven't really worked out how to find it and use it. And I'm, I, I'm a bit worried that it'll take me so long that I'll just plod through the kind of asking people to report in when they need something. So I'm going to shush now because I'm going to get kicked off in two minutes. Um, so there we go. Oh, I can see. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Sandra. Um, we've got a comment, I think, from someone saying, we've had similar conversations and no solutions as yet oh. either. <laughs> Is oh, that, that's that's, that makes me feel better. Yeah, I think it's something probably I need to stop trying to work it out in my own head because it kind of overheats. But it's almost like I'm, I'm asking people for data that they don't usually use it for that reason. You know, they've got their data beautifully, but it doesn't connect. Oh, <laughs> Zana's going to go, is that city? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so okay, I think maybe I'll I can bring that conversation to the uh, with there's the GISC uh, digital accessibility group and uh, maybe we can do that. There. And also, you can obviously continue the conversation on uh, Discord because it looks That's like true. it does look like unfortunately we are out of time now. But thank you very much, Sandra. Oh, thank uh, you. That was a brilliant and insightful <laughs> presentation. It was really. <laughs> interesting to see how you've been and um, working out this problem at city um and so it would be great if everyone in the chat could um use their best emoji to thank sandra for her presentation because i know there's been oh yeah and i was going to start with a gentle cup of tea before i realized that in my ancient alt mug uh oh what they year was it? 2009 wow and I hope Alt will come back to London soon because we were so looking forward to seeing everybody. Okay, kill it. Kill it. <laughs>